On behalf of the Board of the Philippine Bayanihan Society in Singapore, I welcome you to the Bayanihan Centre. The Bayanihan Centre has opened its doors to support the educational, social and cultural needs of Filipinos and others in Singapore. Thanks to the strong partnership between the Government of the Philippines and Singapore and the initiative of our founding president, Ms. Jenny Chua and Vice President, Mr. Ning de Guzman. Since its establishment in 2001, more than 13,500 people have undergone skills training at the Bainihan Centre. But the Bainihan Centre is located at 43 Pasir Panjang Road. It provides classrooms, facilities and support for volunteers and community groups to conduct various short-term courses including basic and advanced computer training, nursing aid, hotel and restaurant management, dressmaking, caregiving, cooking, and baking and cosmetology. To foster the socio-cultural ties between Filipinos and Singaporeans, we also organize the Bainihan Walk. It is an annual event to bring together people from all across sectors of Singapore in a fun walkathon to promote integration of Filipinos with the Singaporean community. Tarana Mak Bainihan Center na. True to its name, the Bayanihan Center is a testament to the Bayanihan spirit or communal unity spirit or social solidarity. I'm happy to see the Bayanihan Center is thriving because of the collaboration and contributions of the Singaporeans and Filipinos. I thank the PBSS board members and staff for their commitment to continuously develop the center and cater to the Filipino community. I also thank all the volunteers from the teachers and staff for generously sharing their knowledge and time to fulfill the Bayanihan Center's mission. As the home for overseas Filipino workers, the Bayanihan Center serves as a focal point for some of the events organized by the Filipino community in Singapore. I invite all my Kababayans, if you need space for your meetings, lectures on business and enterprise creation, or even photography, come and do it at the Bayanihan Center. Tara na, mag Bayanihan Center na. With the gathering and social activities we have here, we try to bring the Filipinos closer and make this a home away from home. You too can be part of these activities by becoming a volunteer. Let us keep the Bayanian spirit alive. We will continuously think of exciting events and programs. Follow our Facebook page, Philippine Bayanian Society Singapore, and on IG at Bayanian Society SG for updates. Tara na, magbayanihan center na. Magandang gabi. Good evening to everyone. Buenas noches. Ed, if we can stop uh, sharing first. Ayan. Again, magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Good evening to everyone. Uh, buenas noches. Welcome to our Bayanihan Talks. Uh, we have our uh, webinar series uh, for this evening. So for this evening, uh, we'll talk about an imperiled national symbol. How can we help the Philippine Eagle survive the 21st century? Of course, uh, uh, together with our uh, president, Attorney Ranveer, and the rest of the uh, directors of Philippine Bayanihan Society Singapore, we welcome you to this evening's Bayanihan Talk. Without uh, further delay, I'd like to welcome our Honorary Secretary, Mom Mary Anchua, to welcome our guest speakers uh, for this uh, evening. Mom Mary, maganda gabi. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, tonight, we are honored to have with us 
two distinguished experts on the Philippine Eagle. Um, let me introduce first our first speaker. Uh, this is Maria Lourdes G. Almeda, Ecosystems Management Specialist of the Wildlife Resources Division, Department of Natural Resources and Manage Biodiversity Management uh, Bureau. Marie is the focal person on Philippine Eagle Conservation and Protection of the DNR Biodiversity Management Bureau. She oversees the implementation of the Philippine Eagle Integrated Plan for the effective and efficient implementation of the government's conservation program on our national bird, the Philippine Eagle. She provides guidance to various national government agencies, local government units, NGOs, and other entities regarding the conservation of the Philippine Eagle and other birds of prey. She also provides recommendations to the secretary through the BMB pertaining to the implementation of the Philippine Eagle Integrated Plan. She liaises with the 11 regional watch teams, private partners, and other stakeholders to ensure that cross-sectoral linkages are developed and maintained and issues and co concerns are addressed. She monitors and evaluates the accomplishment and compliance of the Philippine Eagle Foundation and its obligations under the MOA between the DENR and PAF. Marie graduated with a degree in BS Biology, BS Zoology, and received her Master's in Environmental Sciences at the Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona in Barcelona, Spain, where she was a scholar of the Spanish International Agency for cooperation. She is the first Philippine recipient of a highly technical scientific course from the government of Spain. She majored in the evaluation of genetic risk and work on the genotoxicity and cytotoxicity of pesticides on human lymphocytes. As a prerequisite to the doctorate degrees offered at UAB, she passed and was certified by the scientific Tribunal of the UAB and accorded the title of competent and qualified scientific investigator. Our second speaker is Dr. Jason Ibanez. He is currently the director of research and conservation at the Philippine Eagle Foundation in Davao City. Determined to understand the living conditions of the Philippine Eagle, he pioneered research on its home range, survival and habitat use through radio, satellite, and GPS and GSM telemetry. With the help of his team who studied 25 eagles with trackers, they were able to improve the scientific knowledge on the country's critically endangered national bird. Dr. Ibanez received the Biodiversity Recognition Award from the Biodiversity Management Bureau of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources in 2015, and also the Whitley Fund for Nature from the United Kingdom Conservation Awards in 2015, and a continuing grant award in 2017. He received his doctorate degree in natural resource management from Charles Darwin University through the Australia Award Scholarships. His dissertation on integrating indigenous ecological knowledge and science in the Philippines helped set up his NGO's culture-based conservation approach to species and natural conservation. Dr. Ibanez is a graduate of BS Biology in Wildlife Ecology at the University of the Philippines in Los Baños, and he finished his master's degree in biology at the Ateneo de Davao University in Davao City. May, it is now my pleasure to invite the speakers to uh, make their presentation. Thank you very much. Marie? Good evening. Allow me to please share my screen. 
First of all po, maraming salamat. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Um, as uh, Ma'am Mary has said, um, we were invited to speak on behalf of our national bird, the majestic and the, the great Philippine eagle. So if you will allow me po, I'd like to introduce the Philippine eagle. What makes it so special? Um, these are uh, some fun facts about the Philippine eagle that I would like to, to, to tell you why. Uh, like I, for one, love the Philippine eagle so much. As we all know, its scientific name is Pithecophaga jeferi, meaning it's, um, uh, it was named after um, a, uh, an ornithologist who discovered the, um, the Philippine eagle in the island of Samar in 1896. It was named after his uncle, uh, Jeffrey, who financed the trip, hence it's called Jeferi and Pithecophaga because it's monkey eating. And uh, what exactly is a Philippine eagle, no? Uh, this is highly disputed as one of the world's largest raptors. Some even claim it as uh, the largest raptor in the world. Of course, the others would not agree to that. But for us, of course, it's, good. it's one of the largest. It stands at one meter in height, proudly standing at one meter. That makes it a really big bird from the tip of its um, tail up to its um, crest. And... It has a two meter wingspan, so, or about seven feet. And uh, it is a majestic flyer with a shaggy unique crest, the only one of its kind. There's another eagle also with, uh, with a crest, but only with three pointed feathers. But the Philippine eagle is quite unique in possessing such a unique crest. It also has a massive arched beak, which it, which it uses to kill its prey. So this beak is uh, very, very um, particular for this kind of eagle. It is the only eagle with blue-gray eyes or other raptors. If you can, if, if you would take notice of them, they have yellow eyes, but, but it's only the Philippine eagle that has a blue-gray eyes and large, powerful claws that it uses to tear apart its prey. Adult eagles weigh they between four to eight kilos, no? And normally the females weigh a little bit uh, more than the, the males for obvious reasons because they, they carry the young. In July 4, 1995, Presidential Proclamation Number 615 was promulgated and replaced the Maya and declared the Philippine eagle as our national bird. I remember when I was still small, ang national bird po natin ay Maya. Eh, di ba pag sinabi po natin na national bird, it has to be majestic, medyo uh, may dating. So, tama-tama po, no? Um, if my um, history is correct, um, the uh, Philippine eagle was once called um, the monkey-eating eagle, pero uh, after being brought to the attention of then President uh, Ferdinand Marcos that the uh, um, it's a it's a monkey eating eagle, medyo negative ang dating. So sabi niya, kung dito lang natatagpuan ng Philippine eagle, ang, ang bird na yan, so let's call it the Philippine eagle. So from that time on, it was called Philippine eagle. Among the local names, uh, it's called banog, agila, or haring ibon, which we use in a lot of uh, our articles, garuda, manaol, or mamboogo. We, we all know that the Philippine eagle utilizes its forest habitat uh, quite extensively. For now, um, we have 11 um, regions that, uh, uh, in which the Philippine eagle is found no? in the island of Luzon, Samar, Leyte, and Mindanao. Of course, ma majority of the Philippine eagles are, are found in Mindanao for obvious reasons. And among its preferred prey items include the monkey, this is a flying lemur, flying fox, a deer, squirrels, a palm civet, smaller raptors like owls, a snake, cobra, a monitor lizard, and smaller raptors. But in, in the Philippine eagle in Mindanao, its favorite prey is the flying lemur or kaguang. Philippine eagles, just like humans, they fall in love, no? So may courtship period din sila. And in Luzon and Visayas, the Philippine eagles, they start, they, they start um, uh, uh, looking for their mates between the months of September to November, whereas in Mindanao, it's from September to January. 
So I think the best time for you to be able to see the Philippine eagle when they are most visible is during their courtship period. And the courtship period of the Philippine eagles is one of the most majestic that you can see, no? Female eagles usually are more mature, are they sexually mature uh, they earlier than the, their male counterparts. So the females mature at five years of age, whereas the males at seven years. And one great thing about them is they are monogamous, no? They stick to one, they stick to their partners and remain faithful to them or replace them uh, if uh, the, the partner dies. Sana i-emulate ang lahat ng males, no? And this is what I was speaking about, um, the courtship period, no? Um, a male eagle will um, will chase the, the the female eagle. They will uh, be um, they 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 soar together, and it is one of the most spectacular displays um, uh, elicited by these birds. It's called an aerial ballet. A male eagle would also be presenting his talons to the female, as if to show the female, "Hey, I can I can protect you. Um, I I can be there for you." And he can also start to, uh, when the fe female um, expresses interest in the male, ang gagawin niya is he starts building the nest. He will start bringing um, uh, construction materials to build their home, like sprigs or twigs or dried uh, leaves. And uh, sometimes they soar together. So this is a sign that uh, the eagles are bonding, that they are about to, to mate and also uh, repeated populations in the nest. This is an example of a Philippine eagle nest. Uh, this was uh, discovered by the Philippine Eagle Foundation back in 2015. I remember in 2011, we went on an expedition and we were unable to find the nest, although we saw a family of these birds in Apayao. Thereafter, the search for the nest um, eluded the, the team for so many years until finally, um, voila, the, 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 the nest was there. And uh, these nests are made of hefty platforms of decaying wood. As you can see, the nests have to be large because um, when the eagle spreads its wings, it's, it has to, to be able to maneuver itself in and out of the nest. And then, as you can see, this is a baby chick, uh, I think at a few days old. And uh, here the mother is feeding it. This is the transition period for the for the, the Philippine eagle. So from a hatchling and then to a juvenile bird. And finally, um, yeah, as a young uh, uh, as a, uh, yeah, a young bird. And of course, no, um, we all know that the Philippine eagle is critically endangered. And um, why is this so? Because for now, um, the threats to the eagle population continue to happen. And among the threats are, of course, hunting and shooting of the bird. This has happened recently. And um, uh, just two days ago, Jason, no? Uh, it was reported that the uh, Philippine eagle was found floating uh, in the rivers of uh, Sarangani province. Another threat, uh, of course, fires. Quarrying, kainin or slash and burn farming, illegal logging. Um, sad to say, it hap it still happens in some parts of the country. And if this continues to persist, there would be no habitat left for the Philippine eagle. And the reason why we're doing this to call attention to the bird is we need to protect them because for now, the population estimates for the bird is only uh, around 400 pairs or roughly 800 individuals, which make them critically endangered. And what is the government doing to protect them? Uh, based on an uh, DNR special order, 11 regional Eagle Watch teams were created, This, uh, especially in areas where these birds are found. So these are in regions 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and the Cordillera Administrative Region. What are we doing naman in government? Because some people, they, they say na wala taw kinagawa ang gobyerno, bakit taw nangyayari yan? But I'd like to correct that notion that, you know, we conduct surveys and monitoring activities. We look for individuals 
breeding pairs and nests to determine their numbers, what do the eagles need, what threats are present, and what we can do to address these threats. We do this together with the Philippine Eagle Foundation and other partner organizations such as the Haribon Foundation. And this, this is uh, the Regional Eagle Watch Team in Apayao. On the right side of your screen, you can see Ms. Um, Tatiana Abano. She was the one who discovered the nest in 2015. A apart from that, we do monitoring of the nest to monitor the progress of the chick to see if the chick is thriving well. And we also rescue and rehabilitate, especially the injured birds or those that have been found um, or, or retrieved in the wild. And we also do habitat restoration because a for a pair, uh, for a big bird, they need about 7,000 to 13,000 hectares of uh, forest habitat. Also, we do ex situ conservation and captive breeding. This is done at the Philippine Eagle Foundation in Davao, I mean Eagle Center in Davao City. We also have a captive breeding uh, pair uh, in Singapore at Jurong Bird Park. Likewise, we conduct information education campaigns every June 4 to 10 of each calendar year, which we celebrate as the Philippine Eagle Week to highlight awareness and appreciate the role of the Philippine Eagle and its importance as a national symbol. So various um, activities are, are done, like uh, photo exhibits, webinars, film showings, radio and TV guestings. We have motorcades, Dalao Turo. Um, we have painting contests, and these are also um, live streamed over various uh, social platforms. And as private individuals, um, you can also help us. So what can you do? We are often asked, you know, in our own capacity, what can we do? Like I always tell the kids, you know, you can tell others about the importance of our national bird. You can be a chismosa, but in the right context, you know, you tell people about how majestic the Philippine eagle is. You protect their habitats, you protect them. You, by reporting illegal activities, like when you hear there's been a shooting or hunting of the species. And then you can inform the nearest DNR office or your, your barangay captain. If you, if you see um, an injured eagle or if you know of an eagle that has been captured illegally. We can also practice the three R's. As we all know, we reduce, reuse, and recycle. Uh, this is very important. And uh, when you do practice the three R's, there is a fourth R that is attached to it. What is your response to the three R's? So it's time you did something for the environment and for the eagles. Of course, um, the eagle being a national symbol and a national bird, we have laws protecting wildlife, especially the Philippine eagles. If you kill a Philippine eagle, you will be sent to jail and you will be uh, paying a fine of 1 million pesos. This is in, in, in uh, 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 it is stipulated in Republic Act 9147, which is the Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protect Protection Act, which was enacted on July 30, 2011. It is punishable with an imprisonment of six years to one day and 12 years and a fine of 100,000 pesos to 1 million pesos. And then if you sell a Philippine eagle, a corresponding imprisonment also and a fine would also be imposed upon you. And if you collect derivatives of the Philippine eagles or you destroy active nesting sites, you can also go to prison and pay a fine. Likewise, if you maltreat a Philippine eagle or you 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 secure a Philippine eagle without uh, obtaining the necessary permit, from the DNR, likewise, you will be fined and sentenced to prison. So, um, of course, it's not uh, a lot, no, uh, especially now. I think uh, we are amending the laws now to uh, um, to increase the fines and to make it uh, uh, to make it a deterrent to to uh, unscrupulous individuals. So that's it po. Uh, I hope you've learned a little bit about the Philippine Eagle 
and what makes it so special. Salamat po. Thank you uh, very much, Dr. Marie. Uh, please stay uh, because uh, at the end we will have a question and answer a portion for you. Uh, before I uh, give the floor to the, our next speaker, which is Dr. Jason, let me just uh, request uh, everyone both in the Zoom uh, and also those who are in uh, joining us live uh, through our Facebook Live, you can post your question and comments on our Facebook page or uh, those who are in Zoom, you can post it either privately or uh, send uh, the message to everyone in this uh, Zoom chat box. Uh, without further delay, I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Jason. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Eugene. And again, uh, good evening, everyone. Let me uh, quickly share for my uh, presentation. Yeah. So I, I hope you're seeing this. Okay, so yes, uh, that was a very nice uh, introduction, Mari. Thank you very much. Um, again, there are a lot of uh, uh, words you know, used to describe our national bird. And of course, uh, several of them would be the heirs, uh, noblest flyer, uh, the diamond of birds, uh, king of birds. And all of these are basically to describe you know, uh, at best the elegance, beauty, and the majesty of our uh, national uh, symbol. And I'm sure everyone knows about this. Our bird symbol was once again in the national limelight recently. Its image is in the latest 1,000 peso bill, which was launched uh, this year. And according to the Banco Central of the Philippines, and I quote, we find the Philippine eagle up for the highest denomination because it depicts Filipino freedom, independence, strength and clear uh, vision, which uh, we all Filipinos have. Um, and again, as uh, reiterated by Mari, we are all very proud of the Philippine Eagle because it is as Filipino as all of the citizens of the country. Uh, it is found only in the Philippines, only on four islands. And uh, it is one of the rarest uh, eagles no, in the world. No? Um, Mary mentioned that um, an estimate for population numbers in the wild uh, is no more than 400 pairs. Uh, we just came up with the recent uh, population estimate use, using the latest data from our studies. And it appears that we have uh, fewer no, uh, Philippine eagle pairs, uh, no more than 318 pairs no, across the Philippines. Uh, it is uh, categorized as an IUCN critically endangered species, which means that if we don't do anything within this generation, uh, within the next 50 years, we might lose the Philippine eagle permanently, meaning it would uh, go extinct. And uh, we think, no, we believe that uh, the biology, you know, the biological characteristics of the Philippine eagle makes it really vulnerable to extinction. For, for instance, it's a slow breeder, uh, as mentioned by Mary, only one egg laid every two years. And uh, their late maturing, um, five to seven years, our data also indicate that uh, for, a, for a Philippine eagle, adult Philippine eagle, to uh, uh, hatch, uh, an egg successfully, they, they must be at least uh, 10 years of age. Uh, they might start breeding early, pero yung mga first attempts are unsuccessful and uh, they, they need to reach at least uh, 10 years old to become uh, effective and uh, better parents. No? Um, although they're long-lived, they can live up to over 40 years. The oldest uh captive Philippine eagle that we had at the Philippine Eagle Center reached an age of uh, 48 years old, no? almost similar to um, human longevity. Um, as mentioned by Mary, they're a generalist predator, which is really good. No? So they feed on a lot of animals, uh, at least uh, 14 species. So just imagine kung very specialized in diet for no Philippine eagle, if it's only feeding on one or two species, 
then that makes it even more vulnerable. So, so this means we still have a window of opportunity uh, because the Philippine eagle is an opportunistic feeder um, and we still have Philippine eagles in the wild. There's still a window of opportunity to save uh, our national bird from uh, being lost forever. Okay, um, but again, as mentioned by Mary, despite the national and global fame of our country's apex predator, not all of our Filip Filipino sisters and brothers see the value of the Philippine eagle as we do. And this is a big challenge. No? Philippine eagles are still being hunted uh, and killed um, in the wild. No, Mari mentioned the latest incident of a Philippine eagle that crash landed at sea uh, a few days ago. It was uh, found dead uh, in the shores of uh, Maasim. And we did an x-ray, did an x-ray of uh, the dead eagle. And it's actually a, a shooting, shooting victim as well. It has an air gun pellet embedded on its left thigh. Uh, so, which means it was hunted. No? Although, wala na pong open wound, which means the, ha the hunting or shooting happened uh, some time ago. Pero the bird was lucky. Um, it evaded hunting, but unfortunately, you know, it, it drowned no? um, after it uh, accidentally plunged into the sea. This is uh, another curious case. It's the eighth case of a Philippine eagle uh, crash, uh, crashing at sea based on our uh, records. Okay, so, so uh, the next succeeding slides would show the extent of uh, recent human persecution of Philippine eagles, particularly on Mindanao Island. Uh, Mari mentioned that majority of the remaining wild population is on, is on Mindanao. Out of the 30, 318 uh, in pairs of Philippine eagles, we think that um, about 200 pairs are on Mindanao Island. So in a way, Mindanao is the stronghold, you know? uh, stronghold of your wild population in uh, the Philippines. Now, we, we, we do believe that you know, understanding um, the impacts of uh, human persecution is very important because you know, human hunting and shooting can actually drive the species to extinction even though adequate habitat exists. No? Pwede pong mawala ang Philippine eagles sa isang uh, island or area kung mataas ang hunting rate mo. And uh, be, because the eagles are reproducing very slowly and they couldn't replace eagles that are dying at a fast rate, then uh, again, we can lose the Philippine eagles within our lifetime if we don't uh, do anything. And then after I talk about uh, human trends in human persecution, uh, we will also share no, um, the, the roadmap, the conservation roadmap, again, to save the Philippine eagle and uh, help it survive uh, the 21st century. So what did we do? Atinignan po namin yung data uh, that um, the DNR and the Philippine Eagle Foundation has accumulated across the years. Um, we reviewed the admission records, no, mga eagles that were rescued and brought to two facilities. Uh, first is the Mount Apo Philippine Eagle Research and Nature Center that operated between the 1970 to 1987. Um, and then, uh, uh, after that, you know, the facility was transferred to its recent location, which is at the Philippine Eagle Center in Barangay Malagos in Davao City. Uh, and that center operated from 1988 up to the present. And the Philippine Eagle Center is also where uh, the Philippine Eagle Foundation is based. Uh, it's a breeding facility, but at the same time, it's our um, flagship facility for uh, conservation education as well as uh, training. Um, also, we reviewed the outcomes of the releases of rehabilitated birds no, since 2008. Uh, together with uh, the DNR and LGU partners as well as community, we've been releasing birds that were rescued and were successfully rehabilitated. So 
Um, I was actually, uh, our team was with Mary's team in June um, of this year. As part of the Philippine Eagle Week celebration, we all also successfully released a rehabilitated Philippine Eagle back to its home in uh, Maitong Town in Sarangani Province. No? So this is one of the um, joint conservation efforts that we're doing to give uh, a second chance at life for uh, Philippine eagles that were shot or trapped or were harmed, but were brought back to uh, health. Uh, we believe that um, this is this should be the priority if uh, to bring back the health of Philippine eagles and give them a, a second chance at life in the wild, where they can breed and contribute new individuals to the dwindling population. And apart from studying the outcomes of releases. Um, we also um, tagged, uh, captured, and put GPS, uh, placed GPS trackers on free living birds. Now, these birds are birds in the wild. No, they were not rescued nor rehabilitated, but they are free living. And we trapped them and placed uh, GPS trackers on them to understand how they use the forest, what portions of the forest are important to them. And this became uh, the basis no, for um coming up with recent uh, population estimates okay so this is uh, what we did um and as a result no from the 1970s up to the present um the two facilities uh, admitted a total of 93 uh philippine eagles no um and overall this translates to an admission rate of two eagles per year. And there were at least eight reasons for the eagle rescues. No, eight birds crashed at sea. Now, this is really very unusual. Uh, Philippine eagles don't feed on fishes, but again, eight birds ended up uh, crashing at sea. This is still a puzzle why this is happening. Um, the latest case that happened in Sarangani is the eighth case, and it's the third case of an eagle um, crashing at sea uh, along the coastal areas of Maasim. So again, bakit siya nandun, no? For a bird that's really big, it's uh, it's an obligatory soaring bird. Um, it, they're not good flyers. And on top of waters, no, um, they would easily uh, lose altitude and crash at sea. So again, this is a uh, a, a, a very interesting uh, and, and dangerous no, pattern for our Philippine eagles. 24 birds had gunshot wounds or had x-ray evidence of gunshot. Again, uh, some fellow Filipinos doesn't really see the Philippine eagle as, as valuable as, as we do. Um, and what are the reasons? No? Um, Philippine eagles are sometimes seen as pests of domestic animals. No, they, they do feed on domestic animals, but only occasionally, especially if they're feeding their young. But then again, you, I, I'm sure you also understand that for farmers who are poor, uh, livestock are more precious than uh, the Philippine eagle. So there's really a need to uh, address this and come up with uh, strategies no, to uplift the uh, poverty in the uplands, which is uh, a, a reason for uh, locals uh, shooting the, the Philippine eagle. 11 were weak birds found by its rescuers. Four were mobbed by large billed crows. Crows are the one of the uh, mortal enemies of Philippine eagles. Um, um, they, they, ha they hate each other. And we have four cases of uh, Philippine eagles crashing into grasslands or into the forest floor because they were mobbed by uh, a large group of uh, large billed crows. Uh, seven chicks were stolen from the nests. Now, again, we still have people um, climbing onto the nests, stealing chicks, and then selling them um, and hoping to get uh, decent cash rewards. Um, six were sold and confiscated. 18 were trapped purposely, uh, while some were accidentally trapped in traps that were intended for wild pig and deer. No, uh, we all know the Philippine eagle as masters of the skies of the Philippines. There are majestic, one of the, uh, well, the, the, the majestic flyer of uh, Philippine skies. Pero these eagles, our national bird, also love, uh, they also love walking on the forest floor. 
to look for uh, cobras, rodents, palm civets, uh, and other um, ground dwelling animals. No, and 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 during their hikes or uh, as they walk along forest trails, that's when they get accidentally trapped in snares or traps, native traps intended for deer and wild pig. So this is again a, a serious case, a serious issue for uh, Philippine eagles. Um, and so, and so if you look at these admission clauses, five are clear forms of direct human persecution. So if you want to answer the question, what's the reason for the recent population decline? It's basically human persecution through hunting, uh, shooting, and of course, uh, habitat uh, losses. Okay, so um, so if we lump these forms of direct human persecution together, it totally accounted for 56 cases or 61% of the total admission cases. So said in a different way, six out of 10 rescued birds were actually because of uh, direct human persecution. However, if we remove uh, the number of cases whose admission cases or whose admission uh, reasons were unknown, human persecution accounts for over 70%. Uh, so that means seven birds are persecuted out of every 10 birds. And this is alarming. If, if this continues, again, this might drive the species to extinction. Uh, my next few slides would show actual cases of rescues. Uh, this is Philippine eagle Tagunon. Uh, so this bird was rescued from the municipality of Tagu in Surigao del Sur. Uh, and as you can see, um, he was badly injured, or she was badly injured rather. Her wings were severely beaten until it broke. You know? and, and you can see the x-ray, it showed multiple bone fractures on her left wing. And unfortunately, she died right after surgery in 2017. So you can just, Imagine you know, the, the lack of remorse and the lack of guilt in the guy who did this to the, the bird. Uh, again, we, 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 we are, you know, it's not very difficult for us to fall in love with the Philippine eagle, but unfortunately in the uplands, the eagles are not, you know, some Filipinos still do not value the Philippine eagle as we value them. Okay. Now, if we look at our GPS telemetry data, so these are birds that uh, where GPS trackers were installed on their box after they were uh, released back to the wild after rehabilitation. And out of 16 rehabilitated birds we released since 2008, four died of human causes. No? Three were shot, one of them was cooked and eaten, and the fourth bird was, was intentionally trapped. Uh, we also call it retaliatory trapping because the Philippine eagle hunted and killed a domestic pig. Okay, uh, and you cannot blame the bird. No? The bird is then was breeding, meron po siyang pinapakain na chick, and kung mahirapan silang maghanap ng natural prey item, then they would hunt or choose any animal that they can, um, well, their apex predators that they can capture and then feed it to their young. Uh, a fifth bird was shot, but he survived, um, and um, he was uh, brought back to the, the Philippine Eagle for rehabilitation. Okay, another case is uh, the case of Philippine Eagle Matatag. He was uh, rescued as a one-year-old eaglet in 2011, um, and he was accidentally caught in a trap, again, intended for other wildlife. No? We, 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 we get this often. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, we've rescued a total of 13 Philippine eagles you know, within a span of two years at the highest rescue rate ever. Um, and um, and more, um, almost half of these rescued birds were actually uh, accidentally or purposely trapped. Now, for, Ma for uh, Matatag, we were able to rehabilitate the, the bird. We released it back to the wild. But over a year later, um, he was again hunted in a in a different place where we released him. So uh, now, as you can see, uh, education campaign is still very important in the uplands. Uh, and last but not the least, uh, tagging and monitoring of eleven free living uh, Philippine eagles. The same pattern 
um, birds are still getting shot and trapped in the wild. This is a photo of Philippine eagle Cibula, as Simula Sumilaw in Bukidnon. Um, we were able to put a GPS tracker on this immature bird. And um, a few months later, uh, the, G the, the readings from the GPS tracker was not moving. It was uh, stationary, which means hindi na po gumagalaw yung bird based on our telemetry um, data, remote telemetry data. We're getting uh, GPS readings. They're sent to us uh, through satellite feed, and we were able to map yung mga GPS points. And the GPS points were not moving. When we went there to investigate, uh, patay na yung uh, bird um, advanced decomposition stage na, and we saw in the kill bone uh, marks of a gunshot. Uh, this is the first um, evidence of Philippine eagles getting accidentally trapped in native traps intended for deer and wild pig. This happened in 2013 uh, in Mount Kitanglad. A female bird that we named Lantapan um, was um, um, was instrumented. No, nilagyan po namin siya ng GPS tracker. Uh, she was then with a uh, a a young. Um, and then again, a few a few years later, uh, we saw that the GPS readings were not moving. And when we went there, uh, what we saw are the remains of Philippine eagle and tapan. Uh, he choked. She choked to death. Po, uh, after he was, she was accidentally caught in a native trap. So yung pung loose jan yung uh, rope. Uh, these are the ropes being used to trap deer and wild pig. And uh, unfortunately. Uh, nasakal po yung ating Philippine eagle and she died uh, because of um, so she was strangled by the by the news and this is still happening uh, as we speak okay we're not only losing Philippine eagles but we think that we are losing more of the immature birds than the adult birds now this is a summary of um, the age groups of uh, Philippine eagles that were uh, rescued. And majority, uh, 53 out of 93 birds or 57% are immature eagles. So said, said in a different way, uh, six eagles out of 10 rescued birds are actually immature birds, meaning from one year old to five to six year olds. And and, and this is very dangerous because, you know, if you have a high mortality rate among uh, the young um, members of the population, you know, we might lose a lot of them so that there won't be uh, young individuals who would replace the old and dying members of the population. And that can lead to population crashes. No? Kapag marami pong namamatay na young birds and you don't have future birds that will replace those that have died. Okay, um, again, uh, these are slides of eagles that were rescued. Uh, this is Philippine Eagle Caraga, rescued last September 2020. She had a fractured right leg and an air gun pellet close to the fracture. So she was a victim of retaliatory trapping. This is uh, an x-ray of Philippine Eagle Salagbano. This is um, a current threat in the wild. Uh, as you can see in the x-ray, uh, the bird has a marble toy, no, yung pung jolen, lodged inside its right shoulder. And um, this is from a jolen gun, no, an improvised uh, firearm extensively used in the uplands no, um, by hunters. And uh, itong mga marble guns or jolen guns are recently considered to be a threat to the Philippine eagles. We were able to save this bird. Uh, sur we surgically, our best surgically removed the marble from its shoulder. And then after several months of rehabilitation, this bird was released uh, together with the DNR and the LGUs in June uh, of, um, in June this year. Okay, this is an example of a draw and gun. Uh, we're really hoping that um, the PNP would step up its uh, campaign against uh, illegal firearms, including 
uh, air guns you know, because these are being used to hunt not only the, the Philippine eagle but also other wildlife. And finally, this is eagle chick and salmon, uh, the latest uh, chick that was stolen from its nest. You know? um, this is a two-month-old uh, chick um, uh, stolen last February 2021. And uh, we were able to uh, rescue this bird, and he's now in uh, being reared in isolation at our facility. And we hope to release uh, this bird back to its forest home in the next few years. Okay, so um, so again, uh, there's clear human role in um, the in um, the deaths of uh, our Philippine eagles. Uh, many Filipinos do value the eagles a national treasure, but some Filipinos still harm them. To some of these people, the eagle is either food, a fancy animal for sale, or a pest of life, livestock that should be controlled. For poor families in the uplands, a domestic chicken or pig is more valuable than the Philippine eagle. So we need to change that. And we believe that you know, investments on uh, alternative livelihoods, uh, more empowering projects and uh, the delivery of basic services can help change their behavior. Um, we think that there's still this hunting culture happening. Um, and I'm sure we all understand that for hunters brought up in an environment where killing wildlife is okay, they feel no guilt or remorse over shooting them. No, it's not that they're necessarily evil by nature, but because of upbringing, they don't see um, um, anything wrong with what they're doing. And so, you know, behavioral change campaigns really are very important. And we believe that by, in, by combining law enforcement, effective law enforcement, and also um, public education and more involvement in conservation, we can reverse you know, this. Um, negative behavior towards uh, Philippine eagles. Um, again, as I mentioned, during the pandemic, we've rescued a total of 13 Philippine eagles. This is the highest uh, rescue rate ever. Um, and a business usual well approach will not help our national bird. But the right combination of effective wildlife law enforcement, green job generation, and other community-based programs that clearly offers conservation incentives and ad address poverty will definitely help improve conservation uh, values. Um, and um, again, uh, and this is the, the right time to do all of these uh, investments. And um, we're, we're also counting on everyone here, uh, our uh, fellow Filipinos overseas to help in this movement uh, let us uh, join hands in uh, giving the Philippine Eagles a um, a lasting freedom because it's our uh, moral obligation. Thank you, everyone, and uh, good evening. Thank you uh, very much. So we'll invite uh, Marie and uh, Dr. Jason. It's okay to call you Jason. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes. Of course, uh, thank you for uh, that uh, very uh, enriching uh, information about the Philippine eagle. Um, it's both um, uh, exciting to know about uh, like nuances that we find in the Philippine eagle, but also a bit sad uh, to learn about the like sort of the current status of the Philippine Eagle. Uh, so I received some uh, uh, questions uh, for both uh, Marie and Jason, but uh, before I uh, read those questions, let me just uh, encourage uh, again, those who are participating in the Zoom session uh, and also those who are live uh, watching us in Facebook, please still, uh, uh, post your question, uh, and then I'll try to read some of your questions. So, but I'll I'll read the the questions that was sent uh, to me earlier. So, uh, in relation to what you said, uh, Jason, and also uh, Marie can also ask, uh, answer this question. Uh, since we're all overseas based, what can overseas Filipino 
uh, do in terms of tangible uh, work uh, that we can help uh, to protect the Philippine Eagle and at the same time to do uh, for Philippine Eagle advocacy. Yes, uh, maybe Mary would you like would you like to start? Um, like I always reiterate, you no, know, whenever we conduct our information campaigns, you no, know, we alone cannot do the work. Um, tayo meron tayo mga mata at tenga sa loob ng tubat, and this is uh, found in the person of our forest guards, our uh, communities in the uplands. And um, I would also like to emphasize that we do need uh, the help of our allies to sustain our efforts to educate others on the importance of our national bird. There is still so much work for us to be done. And I hope that we can sustain our efforts. No, Let us not lose sight of what we have started, what we have attained, what we have to do uh, to push ourselves further. Um, because we owe it also to the future generations, no? It is so um, heartwarming to know that once we've retired, somebody will take, uh, will will uh, will follow our footsteps, and you know, one person can make can make a difference, no? And uh, we hope we will be able to do that, no? As, as dynamic as our partnerships are. I'm confident no, that it will all lead us to the path of uh, mutually beneficial relations for not just for us, but for the best of Jason, you Thank want you. anything on that? Yes. Uh, well, Mary mentioned uh, uh, our forest guards. You know, um, we're jointly doing community-based conservation. And... Uh, we think that the fight or the the campaign should be in the uplands where the threats are happening. And one uh, tangible way to address this is to support uh, communities who are doing their best not to protect these eagles. So to our uh, fellow Filipinos uh, overseas, now if you can adopt or support these communities uh, in terms of um, you know funding for livelihoods, Supporting our forest guards by providing gears, uh, subsidizing yung mga patrol, patrol allowances nila, this will really uh, be a big help. And then supporting yung mga uh, community-based enterprises. No? Um, we have indigenous women who are uh, doing um, um, deeds um, and then also uh, flushies. No, as a part of their alternative livelihood, and we're we're selling this on online, uh, the Philippine Eagle, uh, uh, in our website. So if you can also, you know, buy these crafts, um, it supports their artisanal skills, but at the same time, it brings very valuable income to them, uh, which can help improve their lives and you know strengthen their appreciation also of. Um, of doing conservation work as being practically important to their lives as well. So, so that I believe would be tangible support that you can provide. Oh, can I add something else before I forget, Doc? Go ahead. Um, in the D in the DNR, we have a program which we call the Adopt a Wildlife Species Program. You can adopt any threatened species of your choice. Um, uh, an instrument that uh, we we could use for uh, that that we use for this is a memorandum of agreement. You cannot gain custody of the animal or the threatened species that you wish to adopt, but you can help in the sustenance or maintenance of the species. And then uh, we do encourage private individuals, CSOs. This is one way of helping also the DNR. And in return, you get um, a certificate from the DNR that you present to the Bureau of Internal Revenue and you avail of tax deductions. We do not impose a ceiling for that, but uh, if, if you can help us ad adopt, uh, I mean, if you can adopt our um, flora or fauna or whichever it is, um, you can contact us for more information. There have there have uh, there are some companies now um, who have availed of this, and uh, we are encouraging uh, the private sector to 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 help us out uh, through this uh, adopt a wildlife species program. Thank you.
that's such a good news uh married like you know uh, many of our uh kababayans overseas uh and even those who are uh, based in the philippines uh sometimes uh they just don't know uh where and how uh to link up with you or uh even uh this thing adopt a wildlife i think this is a very good uh effort uh in terms of our government and uh of course uh, maganda din na may benefit siya like in terms of tax deduction so i think uh hopefully through this program uh, may may encourage tayo na to adopt adopt uh, a wildlife community and uh nakatulong ka na meron pang madededuct sa tax po and of course uh, sabi ni Jason then uh yung mga community based uh in enterprise siguro what we can do uh, uh in our uh page is that we can put those link uh in in our home page uh 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 we of course with uh with the blessing of the uh the rest of the Philippine Bayanian Society officers i think that such a, a good endeavor to put that link and people can follow okay. thank you very much i have a question of uh, from our uh, uh secretary mom mary chua a comment and a question thank you for a very enlightening talk uh what measures can we take to protect the immature uh, eagles yun medyo para nabasag yung puso ko yung and yung numbers no 90 plus yeah. sure so what uh, i think what can we uh, do to protect them yes uh well i can start and then mary can add later no uh uh for well philippine eagles in general uh one of their unique traits is they're very loyal to the places where they breed you know where they breed these are ancient nesting sites that are occupied by generations of philippine eagle pairs so if we really want to protect uh the eagles that are being produced and even the parents we really need to conserve the nesting site and exclude that from any form of uh, development or utilization. And that's what we're trying to do with the DNR, declare as many nesting sites as possible as critical habitats so they get excluded from any form of development such as logging, uh, mining, etc. And we're talking about maybe uh, 1,000 hectares no? or less na nesting site. Um, and so that's how you protect the immature birds. One challenge, though, is once these immature birds leave their parents' territory, because uh, that's part of their behavior, no? Uh, parang tao din, ano? Uh, the, 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 the young adults become independent. For Philippine eagles, they do that once they are two years old uh, and older. And so it's very important that when they uh, fly over the landscape, they also get protected. And how can we do that? By putting trackers on these young eagles. Now, um, there are cheap, cheap uh, radio trackers that can help us monitor them as they disperse. Um, again, based on the data, medyo nakakalungkot kasi there are wasteful deaths of these young birds. Um, and, and, and we need to prevent that. And so there's this uh, methodology, this method, which they call conservation translocation. So, you know, uh, please give me some time to explain this, but this, I believe, can really save itong mga immature birds. For dispersing birds, um, what we can do is to trap them and then transfer them to an area where Philippine eagles have been lost permanently. Now, we know that the, the habitat is viable, it's protected, pero it, it has already lost its Philippine eagle. You can capture that bird, uh, translocate them, you know, bring that to that safe place, bring many more birds to that safe place until they form another population. And what that uh, does is that it increases the survival of the young bird or the young birds, and you start a new population in areas that uh, for some reasons we've already lost Philippine eagles. And we think that Leyte, you know, the Leyte Island uh, could be a potential area for this uh, conservation translocation. So that again is another uh, exciting, although challenging, but exciting conservation action that we can do to save um, immature birds from wasteful uh, deaths because of shooting and trapping. Okay. I just like to add, no, Doc. Um, Doc Eugene, um, 
research studies done on our Philippine eagles have revealed no, that uh, we do not have reproduction failures. Our birds breed. It's only when they venture into open landscapes that they become prone to shooting and hunting, especially young birds or immature birds. So kami naman po sa DNR, what we, what we continue to do is to establish and protect important habitats of these birds. We proclaim them as protected areas, as critical habitats, or through indigenous community conservation areas, or ICCAs kung tawagin po natin, or local conservation areas. And we have proven that the collaborative col uh, conservation and protection of the species has demonstrated and proven that these cohesive efforts and a supportive society can prevent extinction of the species. No, When we are united for a common cause, unwavering ang ating, ang ating um, stance dyan, no? at committed tayo, uh, united ang citizenry, I think there is nothing that we cannot uh, hurdle. So we do it, you know, one step at a time. And dagdag ko lang po, Doc, no? yung sinasabi ni, ni Jason, yung pagka-translocate ng bird, kunyari sa Leyte Island, no? in the future. Alam niyo po, in 2012, uh, alam po ni Jason to, kasama po ang Philippine Eagle Foundation, um, nagkaroon po ng uh, research undertaking sa island of Leyte. Uh, this was uh, called um, um, ensure, uh, Reintroduction of the Philippine Eagle in Leyte, ensuring the survival of the king of the birds. Na ang population po ng four islands where the birds are found, are they were found to be homogenous. So pwede po nating ilagay yung mga birds from Luzon or from Mindanao, ilagay natin sa Leyte, hindi po mag-aaway po. Hindi mag, kasi territorial po itong mga ibon na ito eh. So they, we can mix the populations, no Jay? So... Yun ho ang, ang beauty ng ating research component po, sir. So, yun lang po. Dagdag ko lang. <laughs> Sorry. Such uh, ano, uh, good news, right? So, uh, both uh, in terms of uh, there's really no reproduction failure, but at the same time, uh, uh, in terms of translocation, it is viable. So, those are uh, parang bright spot that we can uh, aim, uh, we can hope that it continue pa. Of course, there's always that struggle nga yung kunento ni Jason kanina. Uh, I, I'll just stick to the uh, bright spot uh, and stick with you, uh, Mary. Kasi there's a question here. Uh, yung kunento mo, the courtship of the male and the female Philippine eagle is truly amazing daw. I, and I, I, I totally agree. Is this behavior possible to observe live? And if yes, when and where the best place to observe? Wow, pwede ng tourism. Yes po. Actually po, like I, 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 like I said, it's, it's, uh, it has been called an aerial ballet. Uh, if um, kung mamaya po hanapin po nyo sa YouTube, yung courtship ng Philippine Eagle, napakaganda po talaga. And like I said po, the best time to, to see this is during their courtship period. Um, sa Mindanao ho, medyo late siya as compared po sa Luzon. So November, no, J, no, mga September to November, no? And then yeah, yeah. um uh, yun po. So, ang tawag dito, um yun po, they are most visible. Uh, even when pag nagmo-monitor po yung ating mga eagle watch teams, we always tell them that the best time for you to do your monitoring and survey is during the courtship period when they are most visible. Um, pwede ko kayo pumunta sa Davao, pumunta po kayo sa halos sa buong Mindanao, puno ho yan ng Philippine Eagle. Kung ano, kung swerte tayo, baka makakita po tayo sa Region 2, sa Cagayan o sa Aurora po, uh, Aurora Province, malapit-lapit po yan or dyan sa Calab sa Calabar Zone, sa Quezon, sa General Nakar, sa Leyte, sa Samar. Meron po tayo, sir. Basta yun, ikontakin nyo lang po si Jason. Si Jason po ang, ano, ang madalas, uh, mas nakakatagal po kasi sila sa isang area. Hmm. Okay. Jason, anything to add? Baka pwedeng ma-publish yan kung kailan kayong uh, nag-o-observe. I'm sure may mga interesado na to join uh, bird watching because uh, here in Singapore it's a big thing uh, bird watching so there are communities that uh, really go for those uh, bird watching but uh, I guess the schedule since we're overseas uh, if we know the period and more or less uh, who took 
uh, communicate, then I think there will be certain uh, group who will be interested to join. Mm. We can link them up with bird clubs, yes. no? Diba, no, Jay? Diba, we do yes, have... Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, there's the... Uh, um, may mga places po where uh, Philippine Eagle Observations are uh, open, like Mount Kitanglad. Uh, there are at least two nesting sites there. Um, our uh, Protected Area Management Board has a... Uh, a clear program for uh, bird observations and um, um, you know, we can always um, give the contacts no, of, of uh, these uh, organizations. So, so yes, it's, it's, it's a very, very nice experience but to see them doing the courtship displays. Just a follow-up question, uh, uh, Jason, because uh, in your studies, you track, uh, in one of particular studies uh, that I read, you track about 25 Philippine eagle. Uh, what did you discover when you tracked them? Well, we've, we've discovered a lot uh, regarding yung parang secret life ng mga uh, Philippine eagles. No? For instance, um, the what, what they prefer. Uh, in the past, we thought na all forests are being used by the Philippine eagles, but after naming nalagay yung GPS trackers, we found out that they're actually not using yung mga high elevation forests, uh, which makes sense kasi nga, wala dun yung mga food items nila. So, so that enhance yung population estimate procedures natin. Kasi in the past, the assumption is that yung nga, if Philippine eagles use all of the forests remaining, then ilang ilang uh, Philippine eagle pairs uh, could exist. So mas mataas. Um, now that we know that they don't use all of the forest but only prefer certain parts of the forest, kaya bumaba din yung uh, population estimate. But this is more accurate. This is more realistic. Kasi nga, um, it's actually based on the actual uses of uh, the birds. Um, and then yung, again, another discovery is I, I hope this doesn't spoil yung a romantic idea natin ng monogamy among Philippine eagles. They do stick for life, but then if the mate dies, one of the mate dies, they're able to replace it. No, So uh, uh, we can understand that kasi yung nga, uh, sayang naman if namatay yung mate and then they remain single, they mourn and remain single, if I could use that term. Uh, yung reproductive potential niya. And, and this is happening relatively quickly. Uh, for instance, among Mount Apo, uh, we've tagged the, the Philippine eagle pair, uh, and then the, the male eagle died. Uh, and we know what happened kasi may GPS tracker siya, na discover number na it was shot, uh, which is really sad. But a few months later, may bagong uh, pair na ang, ang female eagle mo. Uh, after losing its mate. So this means that kahit um, um, ibig sabihin, meron ka pa rin pool ng mga uh, single Philippine eagles na, that can easily replace no, yung dead animal. So again, yung mga, mga information na he, otherwise hindi natin madidiscover if we're not putting uh, GPS uh, trackers on them. We were able to identify saan sila na minis and that helps with protection. Now you know itong area na ang important. You save that and secure that from um, from, uh, from 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 being lost. So I think these are just a few of the many uh, important value of uh, monitoring and then following the life of Philippine eagles through modern technology. I yeah. add ko lang Jay, add ko lang Doc Eugene. Ang research din po natin on the Philippine eagles have revealed yung dispersal patterns sa mga ibon po natin. No? The young, they venture into open landscapes. Parang tao, malikot. Kaya madali po silang mahuli. As opposed to yung mga sub-adults or yung mga um, adult na talaga, they, they prefer to stay in the forest interiors. Medyo wary of people na sila. Eh. No? This was the case of the Philippine eagle Raquel that was... Uh, uh, released in Isabella po. Uh, she was the first one, no, Jane, no, na, 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 na tag in Luzon. And yung, she was uh, uh, studied for three years until nag-expire yung baterya po niya. 
but um, yun nga ang pinakitang behavior po niya as an adult was uh, talagang dito po siya sa forest interiors. Medyo siguro na parang alam niya, no? umiiwas siya sa tao talaga as opposed to juvenile birds. Yun po. Yeah. Right, that's right. And yun din, uh, in addition to yung sa dispersal ng yan, they're also using itong mga riparian forests, yung mga forests mm -hmm. along river banks. Um, we, we follow several birds and so it's very important that we create more of these riparian forests uh, and then protect them. Um, and then also again, yung discovery na eagles are uh, vulnerable to traps. No? Uh, dahil nga nalagyan natin ng GPS tracker yung female, na discover natin na uh, ito yung Philippine eagle sa Lantapan na accidentally nahuli siya sa native trap and then na strangle siya na matay siya so again we didn't know that before we thought na oh philippine eagle there's no way na naglalakad yan sa ground but if you would watch uh, the bird of prey documentary it's available on youtube mayro actual footage doon ng eagle walking like a chicken on the forest floor uh, so you have the eagle as the lord of the skies pero they're also the king of the forest floor and these are important information for conservation Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I just wanted to uh, to make a, a comment. Uh, we are really, really very thankful, uh, 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 Marie and Jason, uh, for this uh, evening's talk. Because as you mentioned, public education, community outreach uh, is very important to change the the behavior and attitude towards the Philippine Eagle. And I think tonight's talk has really brought out a lot of points where uh, the Bayanihan Center uh, can can help hopefully, as uh, mentioned by uh, Doc Eugene, uh, we could uh, put in our website those uh, uh, web links, you know, about where to purchase those flashes and even how to adapt uh, uh, these birds of prey uh, and also, I think uh, I, I take note that you said that uh, June is usually the the Philippine Eagle Week, right? And uh, we're just thinking that uh, I mean this is just thinking aloud that uh, for us here in Singapore we are actually very privileged that we are the first country, right, to have these lone eagles. And perhaps it's something that we can consider. We will see uh, uh, if. Uh, uh, because June is also the 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 month where we do our uh, uh, national day celebrations and series of talks, and maybe it's something that we can explore. That for this uh, for next year we can do we can focus on uh, work together with you uh, on the Philippine Eagle uh, uh, Drive because we have the we have the we have the 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 eagles here in uh, the Mandai Nature. It's something that we can. Uh, moving forward from our talk, how we can actually help the uh, DNR and PEF in uh, in in this advocacy, uh, diba Eugene, Doc Eugene? Yes, uh, very much, and thank you, Ma Mary. Uh, there are uh, uh, several comments in regards to that. Um, I, I just want to read uh, from our uh, Zoom participant, uh, Miss Chi King. Uh, She's all the way from uh, Canada, Vancouver. Uh, happy, he was, she was very happy to uh, uh, join the, this informative talk, but she had, she, I mean, because of uh, time difference, uh, she had to go to sleep. But before she went to sleep, she said, uh, have, the, have the Philippine Eagle sent, nakapunta na daw po siya sa Philippine Eagle. And uh, he wants to go back daw po sa Philippine uh, Eagle Center. And similar dun sa... Uh, sinabi ni Ma'am Mary, um, I think kinakamusta nila si uh, Gio and Sam. Like, how how are they? And uh, uh, sabi nung ibang kababayan natin dito, uh, we have been witness to the Philippine Eagle or hiring Ibon diplomacy. At gaya na sinabi ni Ma'am Mary, Singapore being host uh, to Gio and Sam at during Bird Park. Is this something po ba na ano, uh, con will continue because other countries have their they they have their panda diplomacy uh is it something that uh you know the philippines is uh, looking uh into uh, uh doing this uh, similarly 
Ang Where Eagles like po natin, o, ang Eagles po natin ay on loan, no? For 10 years in Singapore. Um, nag, nung nag-monitoring po kami last July, uh, we were there and uh, uh, we had uh, meetings with uh, Mandai. And I think, um, tao dito, actually the birds are spoiled. They eat really good food. Human, fit for humans, hindi ho animal consumption. Naiigit nga kami kasi wagyu beef ang tinakain ng mga eagles. Di ba, Jayton? Tapos, sabi na, they are really fed well. They are well provided, taken care of. Um, um, hopefully, no, there will be attempts. Uh, kasi ang, pag, ang kwento po sa amin ng mga caretakers, they are starting to interact already. Medyo pakipot lang po si ano eh si Sam eh si Gio parang gusto na eh eh nagpapakipot po yung babae so hopefully mabawasan yung pakigimag yung may pagkasuplada daw po eh so medyo agresibo daw siya pero si Gio ay eh, umaano na eh naliligaw na ho eh nag-o-offer na siya ng mga branches ganun ho so hopefully no we might uh, attempt a um uh, some sort of uh, activity maybe in October diba J ang target natin October so you know let's hope and pray for that kasi kung sakali po magkaroon ng eaglet it will be uh, repatriated naman back to us eh. that's part of the loan uh, agreement so it still becomes property of the Philippines so, at saka, ang gaya po nang nabanggit po ni Jason, the reason why we have this loan agreement is also a biosafety measure. no Especially ngayon po with the threat of avian flu na umabot na po sa Mindanao. So, Jason probably can talk about that no? because they have uh, the, the PEF has plans to uh, to build a satellite breeding facility. No, Jay, baka may masabi ka? Uh, about yes, that. yes. That, well, that's true, no? Uh, again, apart from itong mga hunting issues, uh, habitat losses, uh, mga uh, exotic diseases such as avian flu, Newcastle's disease, uh, malaking threat na din po siya. We had our first uh, few cases no, of avian flu this year. And the closest case is in Davao del Sur, which is only 50 kilometers po from our facility. And the current facility, no, for those of you who have visited the Philippine Eagle Center. I don't know if you noticed, pero there's already also urban sprawl, no? Uh, yung original woodland ba barriers or buffers, we've lost that. Kasi nga, these are private lands surrounding the Philippine Eagle Center. So the plan now is to transfer all of our breeding birds, no? uh, bears and then individuals used for conservation breeding to a safer place at the uh, foot of Mount Apo. Uh, and this is again uh, uh, as a biosecurity procedure. Um, and then there's also a plan to do more loans, no? of course, with the permission and approval of the government. Uh, um, uh, Jurong Bird Park or Mandai is still open to receiving a few, a few more pairs, but we're also looking at perhaps exploring uh, loans to uh, the US, the UK. What's really important is that we spread uh, our breeding pairs so that many institutions can help with protection as well as breeding. But then as, as Mary mentioned, all of these animals will still be, are still Philippine eagle prop, uh, sorry, Philippine property and any offspring would be brought back to the Philippines either for release or for conservation breeding. Uh, I also take this opportunity to, to ask uh, help from our audience, from the Bayanian Society. We're also doing fundraising to uh, to build the, the breeding sanctuary at Mount Apo. Uh, we're shooting for uh, 6 million pesos to, to transfer our natural pairs. Um, and again, this is to secure them from the threats of bird flu, pollution, um, exotic diseases that are, you know, apparently within the surrounding area of the current Philippine Eagle Center. So we hope you can also help us with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, another good news. And of course, we're so lucky in Singapore coming na una. I'm sure if uh, merong another loan to be uh, na mag progress like in the US there's like 3-4 million Filipino American in the UK 
there's uh, over 200,000 Filipino uh, base in the UK. I'm sure uh, so support nila yon. And for us, like I I've, I've seen uh, Gio and uh, uh, Sam uh, personally, and um, you know, uh, for us to go there as Filipino, we get discount to uh, when we go to during Bird Park. So we're uh, oh, quite nice. happy, and we promote it to our friends. Uh, I, I know I like to talk a, a lot, but of course we're running out of time. Uh, I just have uh, some a few more questions. Siguro from Mom Mary and Mom, uh, Sir Jason, a quick answer lang. Uh, this question is coming from the Facebook uh, page, Sir Sir Ed. Actually, are there any natural predators for the Philippine eagle? And uh, do eagles hunt in the evening? And uh, eto interesado din ako. How do we name daw po the eaglets? Ah, yung pag name po ng eaglets na yan, normally, uh, ang eaglets depende yan eh. Kasi like kunyari si Chick 29, until makahana po nang mag adapt ng eagle, saka po niyang papangalanan. Kunyari si Ma'am Mary Ann po, mag adapt ng eagle, ang uh, yung eaglet, gusto niya Mary Ann, so Mary Ann ang registered din niya. So kung kunyari naman po, may, may meron tayong na-retrieve na eagle naman na ito naman ay kunyari isang adult or sub-adult, Normally po, pinapangalanan namin sila kung saan po natin nahuli o nakuha yung eagle. Kunyari, sa Lantapan, Bukidnon, or sa San Fernando, Bukidnon, or sa Balikatan, or sa Ligig, Surigao del Sur. Yung ganun ho, ma'am. Para it is also easy for us kasi bawat ibon may dossier po yan eh. So alam namin kung sino yung ibon na yon, alam namin kung saan pumupunta. O kunyari sa sa Philippine Eagle Foundation, meron nag a ng eagle nila. Papalitan, kunyari magiging si Vigo ang pangalan ng eagle. Tapos yung pala, iba yung ganun ho ma'am, mas madali for us. Kaysa tawagi namin kunyari, oh, ito si eagle, eagle girly, ito si eagle Jerry. Di ba ma'am, napaka-common. So mas maganda yon, di ba? Very Filipino. yung mga names ng ating mga igen. Jay, may dagdag ka? Right. Well, in terms of yung natural predator, you know, it's our apex predator, so wala siyang, it's the top predator. But again, sabi of course, mo, Jason, humans, yung, sabi yes. mo yung crows, uh, crows pala, crows, sabi mo. Uh, ah, yes. Oh, so this is basically para retaliation lang ng mga crows. They don't really feed on um, the eagles. Um, they, I guess natural behavior yun ng mga crows against intruders. Pero they don't do that to hunt or kill the Philippine eagle. Um, pero yes, as an apex predator, wala po siyang natural predator. Except people. I think we're good at people. that. Unfortunately, we we uh, overpower other species, including uh, apex predators. And I think yung next question, Sir Eugene, nakalimutan ko. Do they hunt in the evening daw po? Do they hunt in the evening? Uh, they don't hunt in the evening. They're strictly uh, diurnal. Um, they're active during the day. They sleep during the night. Pero you can hear them calling uh, even at night time and even at uh, during uh, dawn or early morning. No? If they're, they can be loud, pero they're not hunting or they're not flying either. Thank you. So just a quick follow-up lang, Jason, kasi in relation to sinabi mong human Uh, persecution of the Philippine eagle. That's unfortunate. Uh, anyone have been punished for violating the law uh, in terms of protecting our Philippine eagle? Meron na po bang na, na sentensyahan? Yes. Um, so meron tayong na sentensyahan. Uh, a, a guy who shot and killed and ate a Philippine eagle. Uh, and he was um, jailed for uh, six months. Um, yeah, but um, and I guess we need more of this, especially for cases na talagang makita natin na walang remorse or walang guilt over the shooting and killing. Uh, but for cases like itong retaliatory trapping, um, I guess there are uh, siguro more lasting solutions, no? Uh, and that includes more community-based uh, interventions. Uh, and then we have examples of how we can transform no a former a community that's formerly uh indifferent to philippine eagles but uh, again became conservation champions because of the opportunity to participate and benefit from conservation work yeah of course uh jason marino i mean kahit maparusa na hindi na maibabalik yung life nung uh, philippine eagle na yun. so i mean uh, 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 uh
Uh, I'm down to my last question. Siguro this is a question and at the same time, baka suggestion niya. Um, uh, Marie, sabi niya, uh, is there any uh, celebrity advocate daw of Philippine Eagle Integrated Plan or Philippine Eagle Conservation? Kasi usually nakikita natin siya sa United Nations, right? Merong uh, may mga certain celebrity Hollywood para ma-uplift yung uh, siguro yung advocacy. Is there any uh, such uh, personality? Ang Philippine Eagle champion po natin is si Kuya Kim Atienza. Love na love po niya ang Philippine Eagle. Actually, nag-adapt si Kuya Kim puno ng Philippine Eagle, si Thor. Kaya lang namatay na po si Thor because of old age. Alam niyo po mga Philippine Eagle natin, para mga tao yan, nagkaka-cancer din po yan, nagkakaroon ng mga cysts, na nabubulag, may mga congenital defects, parang tao din po. Yun, si Kuya Kim at yan sa po ang ating Eagle champion. Meron pa ba tayo, Jay, kayo? Meron pa ba kayong bagong champion, Jay? Um, well, none so far from yung celebrity. But I guess this is a very nice idea. No? And, and if ever din po, uh, if the Bayanian Center can perhaps invite uh, maybe uh, celebrities from Singapore who can uh, yeah, be a champion not? for the species, no? uh, this would really help, uh, especially reaching out to yung mga uh, uh, OFWs natin. So uh, I guess it's a very nice idea. Yeah, why not? I mean, you know, I think it's something that we can look forward to. Uh, before we end, uh, we uh, want to thank those who are here in the Zoom uh, for participating and actively uh, joining us. At the same time, those who are in Facebook Live, um, I'll just uh, name a few of their, a few of those uh, who participated in Facebook Live. Uh, 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 Tere Fermesta in Reno, JC Balbuena, uh, LV Gutierrez, Jet Mugtai Alem, Joem Dahika. Hopefully I pronounced your name uh, correctly. Uh, any last uh, parting message for us, uh, Marie and Jason? Any last parting message? Kuna lang po, the, the task ahead may be daunting, no? But like I always say, but if we are enlightened, we are con uh, and a conscious and a committed citizenry is there. Together, po, we can weave uh, a spirit of solidarity and achieve balance. So yun lang po. Let's save, help save our Philippine Indian. Yes. Uh, well, from my end, uh, again. Uh... We're very thankful to the Bayanian Center, to the PBSS, Dr. Eugene, uh, Ms. Mary Ann, for giving us this opportunity. This really means a lot to us. Um, we're, we're, you're giving us the opportunity to share the magnificence as well as the challenges of our national symbol. Uh, we, are the, we are the voice. All of us here are the voice and the hope of uh, our imperial national symbol. Uh, we, but we can also give uh, the species a fighting chance. We are all the light at the end of the tunnel, Ikara. And we really look forward to working with everyone in uh, saving our fellow uh, Filipino. Again, maraming po salamat. Maraming salamat po. Magandang Thank you very po. much. Of course, may pahabol si uh, Mary. Baka pwede yung mga corporate uh, sponsor like Scoot na lumilipat yes. sa Tabao. And of course, sabi ni Ma yes, tama. And yeah. sabi ni Ma Mini, uh, very informative. Uh, hopefully, we continue to inspire everyone to take care of our eagles and all our animals. And in that note, of course, uh, thank you to everyone. Uh, let me just uh, uh, promote the TNK, the Trabajo Negosyo Kabuhayan uh, series in the next few months in collaboration with Philippine Department of Trade and Industry. So please uh, wait for that uh, official announcement. So again, uh, in behalf of uh, the rest of the uh, Philippine Bayanihan uh, officers, uh, maraming salamat. Uh, thank you very much and uh, muchas gracias. And see you soon and see you in the next webinar series. Yes. See you in October. You're coming here, right?